Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris, and I'd like to welcome you to a conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Um, but first of all, as usual, I'd like to start out with an ohm. Uh, wander anywhere it wants, think any thought, follow any wave, surge in any direction, the instant awareness rests somewhere. On. The moment a thought springs up, abandon it and move to the next. In this way, we gain entry to the bliss of the silent depths beneath the surf. A reading from the Radiant Sutras, donated by Josephine Smith. So thank you, Josephine. I would like to welcome the <laughs> Celtic Queen of Questionable Comfort, Amelia Centara. Hello, Amelia. Hello, Chrism. How are you? <laughs> uh-huh. um, I am fine, and my question is <laughs> comfort. I'm doing well. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. It's good to be here. Good to be here. Good to hear your voice. And before we go in further, I would like to thank you for hosting the show last week. I would like to thank everybody that called in and and uh, and participated in the show, and for those who have listened to it in the archives. So thank you, everyone, for your kind comments and and. Uh, I will continue to endeavor to give what service I may to assist those who I am allowed to assist and privileged to assist with the Kundalini Awakening experience. And I and, and Amelia Centara, thank you very, very much. And John O'Connor, thank you very much as well for being such a, a excellent support for for such an amazing woman, your wife. I hope he heard. Did he hear that? I understand if <laughs> no. you've got a full house and you're you know. Waiting to, to have them raise the bid. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's actually at the airport collecting people, but he does listen in the archives when he misses it, so he will hear <laughs> you. <laughs> that I am so, a wonderful woman. Thank you. <laughs> you are. You are a wonderful woman, and 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 you know all the all the all the people that I work with are really stand out, wonderful, beautiful people, and I just want to thank everybody who called in. Everyone, I cannot see the chat room right now, but I would like to welcome everybody who is there. I would like to welcome everybody in the archives as well who are who are listening to it in the archives, and I'd like to welcome everybody who's just listening to it privately in, their own, in the comfort of their own home or wherever they may be on their telephone, on the tram, on the bus, on the air. Well, maybe not at the airplane. I welcome everyone to this program, and this program is really about the kundalini and trust and the deep, deep, deep levels of trust that we must develop as we experience the many, many different phenomena and scenarios that the kundalini will bring us as we live in our ego-obsessed society. Any comments on that, Amelia Centara, Your Holiness? <laughs> well, first of all, Chris, and can I just let you know who is in the in the chat room? We have Julie, we have Sadvi, we have EDG Elizabeth, we have Fashji, we have Star June, and um, all joining us. And I know there'll be more joining us later. So welcome everybody. And if there's any problem with the sound, uh, please do type and let us know. Yeah, um, please do. Right now, I'm sitting in a parking lot in the middle of Fisherman's Wharf, uh, watching a huge NYK line, uh, ginormous ship come through, loaded with containers. Uh, uh, there's an amazing level of tourist activities right here. I just had one of my pieces of food stolen by a seagull, so I just consider that a blessing to the shark. <laughs> 
We got to share. We got to share. Even if we don't want to share, we got to share. So there you go. Um, it's a beautiful day in 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 uh, in San, San Francisco. Uh, you know, a few clouds in the sky. Otherwise, a beautiful blue sky, and uh, and it's slightly breezy as is normal here in San Francisco, California. And so uh, this is where we're coming from today. And and if you've ever driven in San Francisco, I think it will really underscore the amount of trust one must have in the Kundalini. <laughs> not, not the easiest place to drive. <laughs> and I, and I, am, I, am, I am blessed once again, as I was two weeks ago, to have Magdalene Deus with me right now. And I'd like to introduce Magdalene Deus. Hello, Magdalene. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Poor Magdalene. Hi, Magdalene. <laughs> She was just white knuckling it all the way over here to the wharf, you know, as these huge trams and buses, you know, pretend that we're not there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a beautiful day in you know, on Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. This is about an hour south of Santa Rosa, so not too far away from from my home operating base, but definitely a uh, a different world than the peaceful living room uh, environment that I typically do the show from. So. Uh, welcome, everybody, from Fisherman's Wharf, San Francisco. I'd like to welcome Eileen Loro and Rosemary Goliath. I'm going to bring Rosemary on right now. Hello, Rosemary. Hello there, Kristen. You were saying about where people are sitting. I'm sitting in Windsor Plaza in Eden Prairie, so uh, there might be an <laughs> echo even as I talk. No, no. Your sound is perfect. What's it like Good. over there? Well, it was very hot outside, and I'm waiting to be, I'm on this side of town early so I could get here instead of I had the traffic that you have in San Francisco all the time. But at rush hour, <laughs> I come a little early. For, I have a screening, film screening tonight, and uh, you, I'm you are early. The, you, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm early to get myself here so that I can uh. be here. Well, you are just the consummate Kundalini ambassador, and I want to thank you on behalf of all of those people who will be helped by your presentation. I'd like you to thank you for giving that presentation, and, and really, you are doing such an excellent job and service for, for humanity and people of Minnesota and, and Minneapolis. And, and where was it you said you were? Where I am. I'm in Eden Prairie, which is a little south of the Twin Cities, but it's on the on the freeway uh, system. Is that kind of alluding to the fact that it's a really nice prairie by calling it Eden it Prairie? I, I ah, think so. I see. It is. So it's it's, it's it's the quintessential prairie then. Probably yes. <laughs> Could do you have any announcements or anything else that you would I like do. to? I uh, do. I guess. Just the reminder announcement. We have maybe, I don't know if we have six weeks left. I think we're under six weeks to the seminar, September 27 and 28 here in Minnesota in Egan. And um, we will also, we also have Christian speaking on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And so we're going to be getting those, that information out to people, particularly in the area and also anyone else who'd like to come early for the seminar. My Contact information is rosemaryg at usinternet.com and 651-452-3161. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary, for that. And I do look forward to participating uh, in in the events that you have set up. You and Eileen, I would like to to thank you uh, profusely on behalf of the people, on behalf of of the Kundalini in both of us uh, for this information that you're being made that, that you're making available in Minnesota, and I encourage anybody that can make this seminar yes, yes, yes. to do it. You yes. really there's a big difference between hearing it on Skype or hearing it uh, or reading it on the on the uh, internet. Uh, you know when you when you're doing this in person, it's a huge difference. And Rosemary. Rosemary and, 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 and Eileen and Amelia and even and Magdalene have all come to a seminar and, and 
we are still working together to this day because of the enormous, enormous amount of information, the enormous amount of phenomena that uh, that follows a Kundalini awakening. Wouldn't you agree, Magdalene? Yes, uh, I've been to a seminar, and uh, it was the first time. It was actually in Ireland at the Milius place, so that was very nice. And um, it was very early on in my process, so I think it's um, it's also very reassuring to to see and to meet with other people who are going through the same process. So yeah, that's a very good experience. Yeah, it's a, it's a real blessing to 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 meet other people, as Magdalene suggests. And and uh, and Rosemary, what a blessing uh, that you're setting up for people too. I mean, even if you just look at Chris and, and and go, oh my God, are you serious? That guy with the beard? Uh, then you can at least meet the other people that are coming. These are like-minded people. These are people that may form part of a community that you may be interested in belonging to. Isn't that right, Rosemary? Yes, that is. That's part of my intention. The heart of it, I think, is my care and love for people here in Minnesota. My having done the seminar here three years ago, being your student. I have that relationship with you because of that seminar, and that has been my the, the source of my progress in the human way since then. And I tell people that. It's very clear to me what I received of the Kundalini and then being able for that to grow and deepen as you have taught. Sure, and, you know, and if a person is having problems with their Kundalini or you know, having you know, a hard time at, uh, adapting to the phenomena that's occurring to them, you're too tired, you're too afraid, you're... You're, you're, you're paranoid or you're having a, you know, a lot of problems that would almost send you to the ER or to a, uh, you know, a, a, a chemical psychologist or somebody you know, who's, who's more interested in giving you a drug than giving you any kind of, of solace. And most, most of them can't give you solace because they don't recognize the Kundalini. Well, your community, your community and the people that are walking this path with you, they can help you. A, a living teacher, a flesh teacher can help you. Yes. Um, these things really do make a difference, and I want to really, really, really strongly urge anyone who is having difficulty with their kundalini or wanting to expand it further uh, or even wanting to expand it initially at all, like, like Rosemary when she first came to the seminar, attend these seminars. Rosemary is doing an absolutely amazing job, and Eileen Loro is doing an absolutely amazing job and putting in a lot of time and effort, and I think the these efforts will bear fruit as, you know, the, the fruit of the vine of, of the kundalini, the vine yes. of the kundalini. And so, really, anybody that, that, that is looking at their kundalini in these ways, uh, definitely do your best to make it a point to attend. We try to make it as affordable as possible. Nobody is making millions here. Nobody's even making thousands. So certainly I'm not. Certainly Rosemary isn't. Certainly Eileen isn't. Uh, Amelia, well, you know, she's Irish. They always make cool of me. <laughs> and then there's Magdalene. Oh, my gosh, you know, she lives on a hill. It's a beautiful view. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, if, if anybody can make these seminars, definitely do it. It will definitely help your progress. Um, go ahead and give the dates and the times again, Rosemary, if you would. Yes, September 27th and 28th, a Saturday and Sunday, 9 to 5. And it's um, yeah, that basic information. Then my email address, rosemaryg at usinternet.com. My phone number, I love phone conversations, 651-329-9615. Sorry, that's my cell phone, but that'll work too. 651-452-3161. Be happy to, to talk with you about it. Well, thank you very much, Rosemary. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and put you into the Shiva Blue. And and hello, Eileen. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Tell me what it's like in 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 uh, Fort Myers right now, Fort Myers, Florida. Hot, very hot. But beautiful <laughs> skies, beautiful skies, beautiful sunsets and sunrises. It is it's, it's been gorgeous. 
and I'm sitting here visualizing you sitting in a parking lot in San Francisco. I remember <laughs> I remember the, the main parking lot there and the wharf and yeah, it's a nice place nice place to be. Well, it's a it's a windy place to be at the moment. Uh, but yes, 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 yes. Where I'm about ready to take uh, Magdalene on a fifteen dollar boat tour of the bay. Well, uh, I remember that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. Actually, she's going to take me. <laughs> All right, do it. it. Make sure you do it at uh, at night so you can see the lights. Well, uh, it's, it's, it may end up that way, uh, but. Um, I just want to express my gratitude to you also for the many uh, efforts and hours that you're putting into to this uh, 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 seminar in Minnesota. So thank you very much, Eileen. And if you have any other suggestions for the audience who are listening uh, regarding the seminar, please feel free to, to speak of it now. Well, one thing I would like to remind people of is there was a – Chrism had an interview in the July issue – of the the Edge magazine, it's the Edge E D G E. It's a magazine, metaphysical magazine in the Twin City area, and there is a three-page article that would really give people a good feel for who Chrism is. Uh, so it would be worth a read. It is on the web; can be found on the web. Um, so I would, edge, I would uh, encourage edge, people. Is it, would it would it be the Edge dot com? Uh, I I don't have I don't have it right. The, if you just put in the Edge Minneapolis, it'll pop up. It's an okay. e-sign. Um, it's if fairly you can spell easy. <laughs> it's E D G E, the Edge Magazine. And I hope to see a number of people coming. Excellent. Going to a seminar. Thank what? you very much. You're welcome. Uh, all right, I'm going to put you into the Shiva Blue and bring up uh, Her Holiness once again. Hi, Amelia. Hi, Chrism. Uh, do you have any announcements that, that you've been waiting to make? Yes, I'd like to make the announcement about where people can go if they'd like to make a donation to support Chrismini Awakening Systems and the work that Chrism does. The address you can go to is wwwascension kundalini.blogspot.com and in the upper right hand corner you will see the donate button and after pressing that it is very easy so Chris I'm really looking forward to this um, conversation about Kundalini and trust and I would love if you went out in the, in the water during sunset as well that was the time that I went in it's beautiful the light there on, on under the bridge and the and, uh, the waves onto the bridge. It's, it's, it's a lovely trip, so enjoy. And you'll really love it, Magdalene. <laughs> uh, it, it gets me a little, you know, I mean, the waves, you know, and whatnot. But I'll, I'll work it. <laughs> well, when I was there that time, it was gorgeous. There was, there was um, the sun was setting under the bridge, and there was just this beautiful... Um, Color and the waves and that, but you know, maybe a once off. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, this, so this, I'm this, 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 the, the the topic of trust today um, came up because uh, people on the, uh, the, uh, the the secret group on Facebook are are having some issues with it, and I think Magdalene also. And you as well, Amelia, both of you have had in your own special ways, you know, the scenario of trust coming up and, and having to be kind of pushed into trust, you know, in many ways against the will of the ego. Do you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And it's an ongoing process anyway, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It, it never yeah. stops. But, but no, it, does, it doesn't. But it, it does have the the tendency to build once you've oh, yeah. done it one time well then it becomes easier to do it the second time and third time and fourth time etc cetera, et cetera, and so on and uh, Magda, have you had any challenges uh, to to the will of the ego with regards to trust <laughs> um, yes I've had many so uh, I would say from the very first time I uh, I had the kundalini that's when yeah, the whole thing with trust really started 
Um, so I, I understood that had Kundalini, I didn't really know what that was. Uh, I wasn't sure if it was as, I mean, if I could be a, raised in a Christian society and still have the Kundalini. I didn't know. If, I, I don't know. Also, I had read a lot of things on the Internet before I met Chrism, so that was also difficult to read these things and still to to think everybody's, everything's going to be okay. Uh, so I would say, yes, the, the very first months, I think, were the most difficult uh, because I really didn't understand what all this was about. Uh, I didn't know if I was doing the right thing. Um, but then, as Chrism said, it's something you build on because I started to have dreams uh, helping me a lot, really, really helping me a lot in my process. Um, things started happening in my life which were positive, and my confidence and trust will increase tremendously. Um, I'm not, I mean, with the Kundalini, I don't feel the same today as I used to feel like about five years ago when it all started. So it's, it's, it's a better place now, I would say. Thank you, Magdalene. Yeah, yeah. The the beginning times, oh my God, you know, that first entry of the Kundalini into the body in, in such a forceful, willful format, that almost you feel like there's someone else inside your body, you know, causing you to do this or to feel that or for some of the people. And sometimes it's just this heavy, heavy, uh, or it can be a, a, a heavy uh, experience uh, with a uh, with the phenomena such as kriyas or entities or any of those energetic surges that people will get. Uh, what has been your experience with it, uh, Amelia Santara? Well, at the very beginning when I had the, when the Kundalini awakened for the first couple of weeks, I had no difficulty at all, even though I didn't understand anything about Kundalini. Um, the whole process and the bliss and the beauty of it made it very easy. But after that, um, when things began to change, then I had difficulty because I didn't, very similar to what Magdalene was saying, I had fear. And once fear came into the equation, for me, it was very difficult for a while. Um, um, you know, not understanding what was happening and feeling fearful of things that were going on. But again, once I came into information, it made a huge difference, Chris. And once I took that step and began to trust what was happening and began to understand what was happening, but mainly began to trust it, it's like it's the beginning of, you know, um, a process then, as you said earlier, trust builds, trust builds, trust. And, I mean, today it's very different, but I find that even still, you know, things new things still happen for me but because the trust has been established I suppose that I, I completely trust the Kundalini and I trust your teachings for me with regard to the Kundalini therefore when the new things happen and when the you know the unexpected or challenging things happen it's very it's easier now for me to trust and it's not an issue so it makes any difficult or challenging process with my ego that much more, I suppose, easier to, to deal with. Oh, uh, very, very well said. Very well said. Yeah. And, and this is what we're going to talk about today, uh, really. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with it. But first, I'd like to say that you can get more information about any of these Kundalini topics at uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems com at uh, Kundalini Awakening exclamation point on the Facebook network, uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems 2 on the Facebook network, uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 on the Yahoo network. And also on YouTube, just type in Chrisum Kundalini. That will bring 300 videos on your Kundalini Awakening experience. Uh, feel the the level of truth that that or, or or untruth if you feel the untruth in my words 
watch the videos and and feel if this is right for you. If these are the teachings that maybe you have been looking for, uh, go to YouTube and type in Chrism, C-H-R-I-S-M, Kundalini, K-U-N-D-A-L-I-N-I. And uh, go ahead and explore for yourself whether this information uh, is appropriate for you. I don't want to pretend to, to uh, sorry, my, I had to start the car. I don't want to pretend to, to have any kind of a, of a monopoly on on, uh, on Kundalini information. Kundalini doesn't really work in that competitive type of a format, and so I want you to really understand that. that I will I will state the truth that comes through me about the Kundalini and, and that is as much as I can do is to state the truth that comes from my Kundalini as it applies to yours. Now, that being said, everybody is going to have a unique experience with the Kundalini. No Kundalini awakening is exactly alike. However, there are similarities. And there are levels of information, instruction that are given from a flesh teacher that will help you in your awakening uh, process. You don't have to, you know, it, it, it's not uh, uh, necessarily the realm of a dead teacher, a Ramakrishna or Yogananda or, you know, any, any, of the, any of the dead teachers that have passed. They've left a very, very beautiful and a very, very wonderful signature and 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 path perhaps to follow, but they're not here uh, incarnate, so, you know, with you, and you know, walking with you, talking with you, holding you, helping you. These types of things can't really occur from that perspective, except with a living teacher. And so you you watch those videos, and if you see anything that 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 I say helps you on your path, well then well then you're blessed, and and let those blessings be either increased or decreased upon your own intuitive instruction. Trust and the Kundalini is absolutely essential. I'll say it again. Trust and the Kundalini is absolutely essential. It is the it is one of the foundation markers. I think I may have even done a show on this before. Uh, uh, Amelia Santara, have I done another show on this? Do you know? See if you can cruise through the archives and see if there is one. I would, if there is, go, yes, Amelia. And um, there may be, Chris, and I can't recall if it was all about trust, but I think you have spoken about it in a little detail anyway before. Yeah. But, you know, I don't think that matters, Chris, to be honest. <laughs> you know, even if there is another show about trust, because, um, there is so much that you can say about it from so many, you know, so it would be wonderful. Okay. All right. hear it again. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, here we go. Uh, trust on the, in the Kundalini is absolutely essential. Uh, in order to, to manifest positive response uh, to the many phenomena, the many different phenomena that come, because you'll have no reference point for it, you must fill in that lack of reference point with a trust in this energy. And a lot of you are questioning that and say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What if I'm just being possessed? What if I'm being, you know, controlled from some ghost or some, some uh, you know, a vengeful spirit or a sorcerer or, or somebody playing mind games or, you know, that type of a, of a scenario? Well, then... Then, then I will tell you that if you feel that you're having the kundalini, that is what I want you to trust. And if your phenomena matches, uh, you know, to a large degree, the phenomena associated with kundalini, you know, say kriyas or, or seeing floating lights or having energetic surges up the spine or having, having uh, you know, uh, dreams of the kundalini such as Magdalene does, uh, then yeah, 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 you know, you begin to really look at the kundalini and, and follow it. But you also realize that kundalini will not, it will not cause you to do violent or mean things to other people or other creatures. It will bring levels of ahimsa, do no harm, kill no life. Okay? It's, it's, in a, it's an extreme respecter of life because it is the progenitor of all this life we have on this world. 
I know, I know the scientist in you will say, oh, come on. Grissom, Charles Darwin and his beagle, quote, went out to the Galapagos and he proved evolution is the source of all life. He didn't. He didn't prove that. He, he, he did make a good case for evolution, but if you read, actually read Charles Darwin, you know, this guy was a very spiritual guy. He's not the scientist that everybody makes him out to be. He's a very, very compassionate, spiritual individual. I suggest you read. Uh, read up on Charles Darwin. And really, the whole idea of evolution was a created uh, form of evolution that we as souls could mature uh, through the many different lives and the many different positions of life that we engage in as we as we learn about what it is to live and what it is to be a di- a, 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 a developing divinity upon this world, which is what a Kundalini awakening person is. It doesn't matter if you're in a wheelchair. It doesn't matter if you're bedridden. It doesn't matter if you're perfectly ambulatory. It doesn't matter if you're beautiful or if you're not so beautiful or if you're strong or if you're weak or if you're male or if you're female. All that matters is that you have the intention and the ability to follow your own thought vis-a-vis without chemicals, without drugs, without alcohol, without TV, without excess pornography, (coughs) or any pornography for that matter without the qualities that will slow you down and cause you to have a greater level of challenge in your life. <coughs> these, these people that I just mentioned really represent all of us. They represent all of us. And, and in that allness that we are, the kundalini is ever-present. It's been with you since you were born. Do you trust your spine? Excuse me a moment. <coughs> Do you trust your finger? Now remember, remember now, your finger could have cut it, got cut on a piece of glass when you were a kid, and therefore, ah, that finger caused me pain at one time, or it burned me on the stove, or with the iron, or with the campfire, whatever it is, right? You still trust your finger. You still trust your feet that may have been stubbed. Those toes may have been stubbed any any number of times, like mine. You still trust that foot. And in the same way, we reach inside and we realize that the kundalini is part and parcel of who we are. It's in the base of our spine all the time, even whether you're awakened or not. The kundalini is still there in a dormant or or expressive uh, posture. Like the tailbone. Kundalini is always there with every single person and with some animals as well. So, you know, if if familiarity is a level of trust that comes easy for you, then be familiar with it. Realize that that you have had this your entire life. You've had your feet your entire life. You've had your eyes, your hair, your brain, your nose, your mouth, your teeth. And you still trust them. Well, some of them trust them. (laughs) Millen's laughing at me now. So, yeah, so really begin to express yourself inward, inward. Now, now let's bring it down to, say, family living. You've got two little kids. You've got a husband or a wife who is either supportive or not supportive, or, or you know, they're at least tolerant of your wacky spiritual idea or ideology or phenomena, whatever. Kundalini comes to you and begins to push you outside of your normal routines, the routines that your kids have trained you to go into. And, you know, it's the kids that will, that you know, especially when they're little babies, that will train you to, to wake up at 3 in the morning to feed them or tend them or talk to them about their, their, you know, maybe difficult dreams or nightmares or just to hold them and love them. It's your kids that will train you to change your life Well, now I'm going to suggest that you're the kid. You're the kid, and Kundalini Shakti, the sacred feminine, is your mother. And I will suggest that you give absolute trust to this mother within you, just as you, uh, if you're a mother, would give that absolute love to your child. Do you think the Kundalini would give you anything less? No. 
if anything, she can give it more because she's not constrained the way you are with the living of your of your life. Okay. Now, when you're in that type of a family situation, you have certain responsibilities. You got to get the kids dressed. They got to be maybe if they're of school age, they're to be taken to school. They, you know, all of that routine has to happen. And oh, by the way, we're having a Kalini awakening at the same time. Well, this is not incompatible. This is not incompatible. And I'm going to come back to Amelia Centara if she come into the Shakti Red. Uh, you know, Amelia Centara has little kids, and how do you, how are you able to to manifest uh, your routines with the children that still embrace uh, the new expressions and behaviors that the Kundalini brings? Well, at times it wasn't easy, Kristen, but. I began to realize, and it was something that you um, spoke to me about early on, that the Kundalini knew, always knew, that I had small children, and that was part of my process, and that I could trust that the Kundalini knew that and had, you know, my best, you know, was aware of that. And so there was a lot of different things that began to happen. I, I began a practice, I suppose, that... I became very dedicated to and that I gave this as my surrender to the Kundalini and my trust in the Kundalini and I found that if I did this I was able to also do the routines with the children. It became easier to do the routines with the children and it was the the Kundalini and my you know, facilitated that and it just became a sort of an ebb and flow. So that I didn't get careers on the way to school. Um, it was like the Kundalini began to, um, yeah, it just, it just began to become much, much easier. But it's like, how do I trust? How do I begin to trust? And um, that was, I suppose, the thing as well. It was like sometimes I would have a lot of fear around things. Um, even connected in with the children. Um, but as time went on and as I began to trust more and become more actively trusting, um, I would feel the Kundalini infuse me and I would, it was a communication thing that began between, between us. The Kundalini used to communicate to me. And a few times when I got, um, what's the word, when I got, let's say, lazy, <laughs> or I, I just sort of got complacent, perhaps. Well, then I used to find that um, things would not run maybe as smoothly for me um, in my, let's say, responsibilities of what I had to do. So there were lessons to be learned in that for me along the way as well, you know. It's easy now for me to say it, but at the time it was an up and down thing, and it took me a little while um, to come into balance with that. But once once I began to trust um, the Kundalini and work and surrender to the Kundalini, it really all began to fall into place. Well, thank you. Well, thank you, Amelia. And, and this is absolutely the case. Uh, but you have to make that first step. You have to make that first commitment to, one, realizing that you have the Kundalini. So as, as I said before, you know, start looking at your symptoms, start looking at your, at the dream, um, the dream symbolism that you have in your dreams. Uh, start looking at the animals that you're seeing in your dreams. Are you seeing spiders? Are you seeing snakes? Are you seeing panthers? You know, are you seeing uh, even praying mantises that are top of the top of the their 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 uh, food pyramid? Uh, Kundalini is the top of the pyramid for much of the animal kingdom, and and she will come to you in those ways. And and so once again, you know, um, I know that that this is very difficult for some people to even see spiders and snakes and tigers and things such as as that in their in their dream uh, symbols. And and but this is also another level of trust that is developing. And I know Magdan has a a fondness for all uh, creatures of fur and feather and claw and carapace. Am I right? <laughs> I have a bit of a problem with insects. 
Especially, I would say. And, and how does the Kundalini help you deal with that problem? Um, recently, I've had a dream uh, which is quite out of the ordinary for me. I mean, especially with the Kundalini, who's usually treating me very nicely, I would say. Uh, I had a dream because I have this fear of spiders. I'm, I'm getting better, though. Uh, I have this fear of spiders, and the Kundalini from the very start has come to me uh, in the shape of the spider. And recently she gave me a dream in which I was, I don't know, I think there was this living creature around me, and I, I started holding it. But then it turned into a big, hairy, brown spider. Uh, and uh, I was brave up to a certain point, <laughs> not, not for very long. <laughs> because I remember then, I probably... Um, and then, I, I don't know if it was during the same dream at, at my parents' place. And there were lots of spiders on the ceiling. And I remember during the dream, I was saying, oh, no, no, this is not possible. No, this is too much. Like, if I knew that um, that um, I was supposed to surrender, or, and my mind in the dream, or somebody being me in the dream was saying, no, oh, no, this is too much, and I was trying to find the solution. Uh, so I think the Kundalini has been trying to get me used to, or facing my fears by putting me in situations in dreams where I would be uh, in connection with spiders. In. Absolutely, and I can second that really because the, I've been working with Magdalene for about four years now. Uh, since the Iris seminar at at, uh, at uh, Amelia Centaurs and John O'Connor's place, uh, and yeah, the Kundalini has really predominantly come to her as an arachnid, and uh, this would be either uh, you know from a crab from the ocean, which is basically a sea spider to to you know the littlest tiny spider that you can imagine on, on you know hanging on a tree or a branch or something of that nature and she has really been pushing uh, Magdalene to get more and more comfortable with with nature not just spiders but you know a mouse or a, or any kind of a bug from a cockroach to a mosquito um, you know, these types of things. And as the Kundalini works with her, levels of trust are given and received. And, and once again, they, they compile. They, as you trust more in one area, well, then your trust will make it easier for the other areas of life to be to be dealt with. So as we get back to the scenario of, you know, you're a, a parent with a couple of kids, you know, great levels of fear can be developed because you don't know and you fear for your kids because you know that if you're not there to raise them, well, what's going to happen to them? And so these levels of fear are really, really accentuated and amplified and giving, they are given to the person as an opportunity to develop trust, but they must know it first. As I said in other programs, information is power. If you have enough information, your trust comes much easier. Just as Magdalene said, as she's walking into her parents' place and she sees the spiders all over the place, well, that portion of her consciousness wasn't thinking, oh, this is, this is Kundalini, you know. That portion of her consciousness was dealing with her anxiety about seeing so many spiders in her parents' place. And uh, she's nodding her head. And so the more information that you have about the Kundalini, the more the information that, that you are driven to to learn, that you're driven to discover about yourself, the greater uh, your levels of trust will begin to be. And this is very important because as you, as you begin to build your trust, you begin to build your faith. And as you build your faith, you can be sure, you can be assured that you will not know the answers. Because to build faith, you cannot know the answers. Okay? When you're building faith, you can't know the answers. But as the answers come to you, 
Those same answers that are building your faith are also building your trust. And as your trust builds, you get to the point where Mia Centara is, or where I am, you know. You know, you know. even to this day, I may, rarely, I'll have a difficult dream or some sort of experience that is really causing me to, to reflect upon Kundalini. And it's always, there's always a positive, positive message that's being given. Even though in my early days, it would have been perceived as a negative. As a, as a bad thing or as a challenging difficulty, it turns into a, 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 a triumphant understanding of faith and trust in my kundalini process. And as you listen to Santara talk about her experience, you know, the trust is an empowerment that is beyond my ability to express to you. It is so strong. It is so powerful. It is so very important. As you have the trust during difficult situations, that is the best time. So as you have your two kids, or your, or your one kid, or your three kids, or however many kids you have, and you're having the kundalini at the same time, and you may be going into kriyas, or even, which is even more of a challenge, is seeing the entities, and then having the entities look at you, and then as you, as you follow them, they go into your kid's room, and oh my God, you're thinking the very worst things, you know, and you run into your kid's room, and you don't know what to do, and you don't see them, but you think they're in there, because you saw them go in there, and that... The whole idea was to scare you by having you see them go into your kid's room offering a potential threat to your child. There is no threat to your child. There will never be a threat to your child. Even if that entity is able to coerce a word out of your three-year-old, it will never, ever, ever be a threat to your child because your child's kundalini, your child's process, your child's level of spiritual protection, which is quite strong when we're kids. When we're kids, we have to have strong uh, levels of guidance and intuitive and protection simply because we're living through a lot of karmic issues uh, when we're little kids. Okay, But as you, ha- as you have the kundalini and you're trying to raise your kids, I want to, I want you to, uh, here, I'm going to read something that I wrote to another person now. Uh, Santara, can you come on? I want to see if I if I switch into another channel here, whether or not I'm still heard or do I disappear. I haven't done it like this before. So can you come on here? Come on. Come into the red here. I'll put you in the red. Are you in the bathroom? Where are you? <laughs> Am I knocked off here? Are you there? Hello? Hmm. Let me try for I mean here. Uh, yeah, so blog talk's really taking its time right now. I'm not even sure I'm being heard here. Uh, Eileen, are you there? Eileen? Jeez Louise. Have I been talking to the air the whole time? <laughs> you got to love that. Hello, Eileen. Hmm. Anybody, uh, if anybody can hear me, please call in. The number is 347-934-0026. What do you think? Yeah, it doesn't, yeah, yeah, I know. It says I'm on the air. Wow. Let's see if I can get some tar. Sorry, folks, if you're hearing this, and it is recording, so at least... Those of you in the archive will be hearing this, so I apologize for this. We have had some technical difficulties with Blog Talk earlier today, and, and so, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Amelia, are you home? Hello. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'm just going to continue. I'm going to go ahead and continue. So, uh, as we, as we, <laughs> let me see. I won't, uh, I'm not going to change the channel. I'm having too many of issues with blog talk, and I just as soon not, uh, not get pushed off and then have to start off again and do all of that stuff. So uh, I was going to read you some advice that I wrote to another person who is having these very same kind of issues. Uh, you need to begin to take the chance. Take the chance. If you have... 
if you have verifiable symptoms of the kundalini, you know, the spinal sweeps or the capriyas or the eyes up or, you know, any of the number of fixations on certain colors like like certain deep reds or deep dark blues, uh, seeing floating lights, uh, having uh, snakes appear in your dreams or spiders or things of that nature. If you have that quality of experience, then you can pretty much begin to connect the dots towards a kundalini awakening event in your life. Amelia, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? Yeah, what happened? Nothing. I'm, I'm here the whole time, Red, and you're speaking as though you can't hear me, but nobody could hear me either in the studio. Weird, That's huh? very Lock. strange. I've been you... red, and I, it keeps going back to blue automatically, and I'm not doing that. And oh, I thought you were doing that. Okay, all right, all right. Well, you know, what, what's the possibility that, that two awakened Kundalini people could have d- difficulties with such a fragile network as blog talk? Oh, this is loud talk, my goodness me. Talk about right. stretch no tolerance. I'm going <laughs> to click over to the KAS1 on Facebook, and I'm going to read uh, what I wrote to a person. Tell me if you can hear me, okay? Yeah, will do. Here we go. Are you there? I can hear you, Chris, and yes. Oh, excellent, excellent. So here we go. Um, let's see here. Right. Uh, Okay. Let's see. Know that the Kundalini also, uh, know that the Kundalini understands that you have children to raise. Know this and trust this. Your kids also know this. And from that knowledge, you can begin to trust what is coming to you regarding some of the changes that will come but that you can incorporate into your life, okay? And, and, and as an aside, I say, you know, be aware of anyone giving you negative advice about your kundalini or ways of controlling it or being afraid of it, things of that nature. The most important uh, thing to do is to find ways to embrace this process and initiate changes that allow it to do what it is doing and at the same time, that you live from some of the familiar aspects of your life, allow and accept those areas that are new and different. Okay? And what you might want to do, any of you, is to write out, uh, write out a flow chart. Okay? Write a flow chart. And if anybody that, uh, needs to know what a flow chart is, I put it on the... Uh, Kundalini Awakening exclamation uh, uh, group there on Facebook, if you're on Facebook. And uh, a flow chart is basically, you know, you put the symptoms down the left-hand column and you put the five bodies of, of, uh, of, of the human being across and going horizontal on the top. And that gives you a level of understanding about how things are working for you how things are working for you. And I'm coming back to blog talk. Did everybody, was, was that come through okay? Yes, it did indeed. Ah, excellent. So I guess I can't change the channel. Thank you, uh, Kundalini. Yeah. So as we begin to trust our, 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 our Kundalini, the first thing that I'm going to suggest that you not do is not believe any of the fear stories that are out there. Uh Find a teacher or a source of information that you like, that you trust, and stick with that teacher. Don't start going all over the place, being a butterfly, uh, you know, a spiritual butterfly going from flower to flower to flower to flower. Uh, find a, a teacher that you trust and begin to embrace that process through the teachings of that person. And, and you know, especially if they're working for you. So I don't care who it is, you know. Make it some great uh, Indian guru. Make it some, you know, Eskimo guru. Make it some, uh, you know, ayahuasca shaman. Make it some uh, some amazing teacher uh, that you feel the most comfortable with, but then begin to invest your trust into that information. As you, as you, If you listened to last week's show, 
there's some people that are investing trust that he gives to you. And and if you're listening to this show, by virtue of the voice and by virtue of the omnipotent level of communication that Kundalini has, uh, the flavor of Kundalini that is within me is also coming into you. Feel, discern it. Let it feel you. And if it feels good to you, if it, if it makes sense to you, if there's some level of, of uh, fear abatement that is happening for you, then really invest your trust. It's, it, you know, everything is working for you. Nothing is working, working against you. Even when you have the, the hurtful, negative, scary, you know, phenomena, you know, the, the nightmares, the, the, the monsters that you may see in real time, in real life, standing right next to you, uh, it is always, always, always you that gets to choose the perspective that you relate that to. So you get to choose in what way you're going to relate to that phenomenon. So let's just, be, may I use you as an example, Magdalene? So Magdalene says I can use her as an example. So uh, last night, uh, uh, Magdalene uh, called me into in, into the room that she's in at the ashram. And she said, Chrisom, Chrisom. I said, yes, what, what's up, what's going on? And she didn't say the word. She just pointed a corner in the room. And I went, ah, yes, that unlucky arachnid. Yes, and so I saw the maybe one quarter inch diameter spider in the corner. And I silently said, pardon me, your holiness, your shakti. Uh, may I may I re- remove you from the room just so Magdalene would be able to get some sleep tonight? Which, which I was... I was given permission to do. <laughs> so, so, you know, as you begin to trust this process, you can do those things, and she will give you challenges daily sometimes. And as you have your kids, you know, kids kids are like extensions of, of your body in, 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 you know, in more than just, say, a biological way. And in a real way, you have to watch what they're eating, watch what they're doing. You know, are they are they going to touch that hot stove? Are they putting their hands near an electrical outlet? You know, kids you have to be very very careful of because they don't really have, they they have so much innocence they don't know what is hurtful and what isn't and and typically you know they learn through the uh, uh, through painful example. But as you as you teach your children how not to touch that hot stove, so will the Kundalini teach you how not to be afraid, how not to have fear, how not to approach the Kundalini, the sacred goddess, the sacred Kundalini, how not to approach it. If she gives you a monster, then it's just basically a way to alleviate your fears in your life. If she if she shows you something that's potentially attacking your kids, then it's giving you she's giving you an opportunity to give trust to the force that even allowed to see the entity in the first place. You didn't just become psychic because you had a you ate your Cheerios this morning. <laughs> you become you know able to see entities because you 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 drank the 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 uh, the magic elixir that day, you're able to see entities because you have kundalini, and the kundalini is allowing you to open that portion of your sixth chakra, third eye, so that you can perceive that which no one else can see. You can perceive it, and because you can perceive it, it will be used as a teaching tool for you, for your progress, for the alleviation of your fears. Do we have a caller, Centaur? I see a new caller on on the board there. Hopefully you'll be able to switch to the red and tell me you're maybe not. Okay. So uh, if, if if there is a caller, please feel free to put them through. So you know, you know, I was I was just explaining to Madeline a little while ago, if I may. Yeah, I was explaining to her. I say, look. 
You need to trust the Kundalini. The Kundalini already has full control of your life. It controls your diet. It controls your your behaviors. It controls uh, what kind of work you're doing, whether it's in your career. It, it, it controls every aspect of your life. How can you not trust it? For those of you that are early on in your process, you know, you're thinking about this and yeah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's hard at the beginning. Let me tell you what happened to me. I had I had quite a bit of uh, activity as I, from an activated standpoint. Um, you know, my fingers were going automatically into the Kayan Mudra. My eyes were looking up. You know, my tongue going up, and I was seeing floating lights and all of that stuff before the spinals because of my previous uh, uh, incarnation of being Kundalini Awakened. Uh, but this body needed, this meat suit, as they say, <laughs> this body needed its awakening in the lifetime. And I had never connected the dots because I never really was exposed to anything of a Kundalini nature. Uh, so anyway, uh, this activated state uh, uh, proceeded into a spinal sweep. And after the spinal, you know, wow, the spinal sweep was just amazing. Oh, my gosh, union with God. How? What can I say? I mean, imagine being blended with every molecule that makes up this world and, and, and the cosmos. I mean, imagine, can you? Can you even? It's unspeakable. It's an unspeakable experience. Really cool, though. <laughs> it really is. It's an awesome, awesome, beautiful, wonderful, amazing experience, and that doesn't even come close. But anyway, after I had that, uh, once you have union with God, that signature never leaves you, and it forever changes you. And part of the changes is a, a, a an invitation to the kundalini in you to expand itself in you and therefore expand the transformation of you. So as you expand that transformation of you, as it does that, it's bringing in all the new phenomena. And all of a sudden, you know, I was able to see a lot more and interact with a lot more than I was even wanting to interact with. Everything from incubi, succubi, to, to uh, in, in, you know, having... Severe forms of telekinesis, which just scares the heck out of you if you don't know that you have severe forms of telekinesis. You know, when you're moving maybe about a ton of huge steel pipes, you don't think it's you. <laughs> you don't. You just think the pipes are moving. Oh, what the heck is that? You know, and so the phenomena can really, really ladle out really strong level of fear in you. But in that, in that first time or that you know, the area of the first real strong phenomena with you out of spinal sweep, the phenomena will typically get really much stronger for you. And as you as you're guided by the Kundalini to either one experience it as a form of karmic uh, balancing and also at the same time as a form of training and, and opening of transformation for you. You're imbued with levels of trust because you have no choice. Now, some of you, some of you, even listening to this right now, are going to jump right into the ER. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. I got to go to the ER. I just saw that giant thing move. But I want you, you know, I want to hear, I want you to hear from Magdalene what her thought process was as she was, was getting ready to go to the ER. Yeah, I've said that before. Um... So, yeah, that's when I had my first spinal sweep, and that's when my nostrils start to move, like, on their own, apparently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I was sitting on my bed, and I was thinking, okay, what do I do? It was, I think it was about four, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. And I think it was, it, was late, it was earlier, actually. It was maybe midnight. I spent the whole night wondering what I should do. Um, and then I thought maybe I should go to the ER. 
Uh, but then I thought, what am I going to tell those people? So I'm just going to tell them I've been meditating for the last three weeks. And now my nostrils are moving on their own. And it, it didn't look good at all. So I, I, I give on that idea. <laughs> now, I, I do want to uh, make the statement that she wasn't meditating for three weeks straight. No. <laughs> <laughs> She was meditating at times during those three weeks, maybe once a day, maybe an hour a day or, or yeah, something. Yeah, 30 minutes. Yeah, 30 minutes a day for three weeks. And Okay. So so the phenomena in the early, in the early times will become fast and curious, and if you don't know what's occurring, it's going to instill levels of fear in you. If your energy, if your kundalini consciousness has you directed you to this information that you're hearing right now, uh, then you need to really trust it. You need to really trust the process of your kundalini because the scenario is, is, you know, it is nothing to be afraid of. It is nothing to be to be feared. It is to be embraced. And as you embrace it and as you, as you choose not to embrace your fear but rather to embrace the energy that is causing the phenomena, your phenomena will actually increase, but the phenomena will be of a very positive level. Uh, you know, seeing uh, angelic entities, or seeing uh, uh, or feeling uh, stronger levels of bliss and ecstasy and joy and happiness and completeness. You know, just within your day, just as you're, as you're, as you're getting up and taking a shower or brushing your teeth, you're feeling, you know, have you ever had nirvana and brush your teeth? <laughs> Think about it. You know, ecstatic brushing. Now, there's a book. There's a book. So, yeah, uh, really begin to embrace what the Kundalini is showing you, whether it's fearful or not. Now, I was visited by a, a, an incubi, uh, which is a, a kind of a sexual predator. Uh, and, and I, you know, I knew it was, and I knew what it was doing, and I told it to leave and it left. The very next day, you know, I wake up at 3 in the morning, and wow, there it, is. there it is, climbing on top of me again. It said, no, get. I told you not to come anymore. And it persists a little bit, and I persist more, and it leaves. And then the next night, you know, I wake up around, I think it was about 4 that time, and there it was again, and I got really angry. And when you're angry, you know, some anger is based in fear, but this anger was based in irritation and violation. And I decided, no, this is not going to continue. It left quickly then, but I pursued it. And I don't know how to tell you this. For me, when I'm in a certain mind state, I can astral project anywhere at any time, whether I consciously know the location or not. It's hard, a bit like, Robert Monroe talks about when he stretches out and goes and snaps to a new location. Well, I stretched out and I snapped exactly where that where that creature went, and well, we had a very different conversation about it coming back to me ever again. So it's not to say that you can't, shall we say, forcefully express yourself. Uh, with regards to some of the phenomena that comes up, because forcefully expressing yourself also accept is, is a form of accepting the phenomena as real, acting upon that acceptance. And so you can do that too, but you don't ever do it against the kundalini itself. The kundalini is in by it anyway. It's not going to be bothered by what you do, you know, but it's a form of resistance, and you don't want to resist the kundalini, that's the opposite of trust. Okay? As you trust the kundalini, trust that it is holding you the way you hold your kids. Now, if your husband is, or your wife is going, well, honey, I think you're getting a little too heavy into this weird shit. You know, I'm not really comfortable with you, you know, listening to that chrism guy. I mean, who the heck is he? You know, he doesn't. He hasn't written a book. <laughs> Which I've, I've corrected, but you know, you know, and so there you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna 
you may get some flack that way. You just have to really hold hold to your decisions to to open yourself to the Kundalini the way you see fit, and and really just you know try to help your your spouse or your your mate uh, to be more accepting of what it is you do, and try to make what it is you do less of a of an impact on their life. Um, so it's you know it's very important that you begin to manifest behaviors that are similar to what your family, your spouse, and your coworkers, and you know you're going to respond normally. You're going to stop at the crosswalk. You're going to look for cars. You're going to press the walk button. You know you're going to take the train to work. If you take a train to work, you're going to be you're going to be your normal self. But inside you, there's something very very different that's going on. Uh, even you know Magdalene, you know. When, uh, and I'm going to come back to Magdalene because she's sitting right next to me and I'm going to ask her a question that I have not asked her before. And, and here I'm going to hand the microphone over to her. And Magdalene, when you're doing your work, how does the Kundalini make, it, uh, make its presence known to you? Um, what's very specific in my case is that um, I constantly see a snake in, in my vision. Like now I'm in, sitting in that car, I'm looking at the sky and the vision of this snake in the sky. So it's now, funny now, because... Let, let, me, let me explain a little bit about her snake. Her snake is in the form of Isis. Isis is the serpent that kind of outlines a doorway in the Egyptian mythology. So just, just if anybody is going to look at a pictorial representation of Isis as a serpent, that will kind of give you an idea of what Magdalene is seeing all the time, everywhere. Please continue. Okay. So, yeah, that's what I see, but um, if I, if, I mean, she, it's not an invasive vision uh, I see because I, at the moment I'm raising my eyes and then I see it. Uh, but what's, that, what is quite funny, because I'm a teacher, and it's happened a few times that I'm writing on the whiteboard, and then I see this little snake like on the letters where I'm writing, but it feels nice. It's just a, it's just a reminder that the Kundalini is here with me, so it's something nice, actually. Very nice, very nice. Um, so, yeah, so she's up in front of uh, the general public every day. Magdalene has, can I say? Magdalene has Kriyas, and she has, you know, visions, and she has a lot of phenomena every day, all the time. And yet she's still able to drive a car. She's still able to visit her friends at the convalescent hospital. She's able to relate to her parents, her sister, her friends, strangers, corporate entities, governmental agencies, just like you who are listening to this broadcast right now. If any of you have a question about this, I encourage you to call in. Uh, the number is 347 And if if you hear some of that background noise behind us, particularly some of the street performers here in, in Fishman's Wharf, San Francisco. Uh, so the number, once again, is United States Area Code 347-934-0026. And Amelia Santara will answer your call, and she will bring you in on board. So if you're interested, please call 347-934-0026. As you begin to formulate trust based upon phenomena, that's one thing. And that's what I've been talking about, you know, this past uh, half an hour. But I'm also going to suggest that you extend trust without phenomena. You know, trust with phenomena isn't exactly faith because you have the phenomena that displaces your faith. So you don't need faith. If you're having, if you know the answer, so you know that, oh, okay, A plus B equals C. Kriyas plus, you know, eyes up position uh, plus floating lights equals Kundalini. We'll just, we'll just make up that equation right there. But when you don't, when you're not having, you know, overt phenomena, say you're maybe just at the beginning stages, I want you to really, really, really accept your trust into the kundalini, especially for you 
who are searching for it, who are who are striving in every way that you can to receive the kundalini. It is not advisable to do that without instruction. Seriously. Kundalini kundalini activation on a body that is that and and, 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 I, and I mean five bodies of the human expression, the physical, the mental, the emotional, the psychological, and the spiritual bodies. Uh, kundalini awakening on, on a human being like that can be very painful, extremely painful, burning all the time, but pain. You don't need that. It's not necessary. So you must extend trust into the process and not try to force it. Do not force the kundalini. You'll be sorry if you do. I can guarantee you that. My kundalini uh, uh, gave me impetus to to meditate and prostrate myself five times a day, like a Muslim, like a Muslim would do. And I had my prayer rug, and I'd go out in the middle of the park somewhere where nobody could see me. <laughs> I would do my five Tibetan, I would do my alternate nostril breathing, I would do all the things that I have people doing in the fifties. But I was guided to do that. Now granted I didn't have the teacher at all. And I didn't have books. And so basically I was just putting my faith and trust in something that I could not verify was even real to me at the time. I just I just felt good when I did these things. I felt it was necessary, and so I did them. I did them, and then the Kundalini came to me. Came to me, you know. It was very smooth, but I can use myself as an example so much because I've had the Kundalini. I've had remnants of a of a previous Kundalini uh, in my life since I was a kid. That's just the fact of it. But I look at Magdalene. I look at uh, I look at uh, you know Rosemary. I look at you know the people that I have activated and that have, that are self-activated, such as Amelia and and and, and other people, Srikant and and uh, you know people that really in, in to, to their current uh, uh, day they, they did not ask for it so much. Now some did, and by asking they received. You don't always receive when you ask. I know, I know the Bible says you do, but you don't. Uh, I'm going to ask for a billion dollars right now. Dear God, give me a billion dollars right now for this. Prove me wrong, please. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Looking for it here. Maybe it's in the Bay. But anyway, so you don't always get what you ask for because you don't always understand the ramifications of your karma and, and, and you know, everything that that comes into play that you're not aware of. Uh, so, but for those of you that are that are cultivating yourself to have the kundalini, kundalini, follow the safeties. Be the forgiving person. Be the service-oriented person. Be the person that works from love first, always. And that that will pretty much keep you out of the realm of pain. Okay, if it comes to you without your knowledge and you have the pain, well then, you know, there are some challenges that are being given to you in order to to help you learn the best behavioral uh, modes of expression right now. Uh, I know some of you who are listening to this have pain right now because you, you've either forced the kundalini or the kundalini has, has brought itself to you in such a manner as caused pain within your system. And I know it's hard for you to hear me say, oh, trust the kundalini. You know, and it's kind of like saying, yeah, light a match, stick your finger in the Feel the burn on your skin, and oh, trust the match, trust the fire. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Fire with me, baby. Fire walk with me. The scenario is, uh, if you're cultivating the kundalini and it comes, well, then you're, you know, you're getting uh, challenge for that. That really will indicate the level and the severity of of the necessity for trust in this process, for being willing to work with it, not against it, not trying to control it. Trusting the kundalini is not controlling the kundalini. We never control. We try to harmonize. Harmonize with the kundalini. Do what it asks you to do. Okay? 
And if you have it, we're, we're coming up to 40 minutes left in the show right now. And so if you have any questions, please call 347 934 Amelia will, will, will field your call and uh, put you right on the radio here. Now, for for those of you that have just had a spinal sweep and, and, are, and are coming into a greater expression of Kundalini, now is the time to really extend, embrace the Kundalini, trust the Kundalini with your life because that is exactly what is occurring. There is no part of anybody that has the Kundalini that the Kundalini does not control them if it chooses to. Some people will seem to have more choice than others and that's okay because we all have different karma coming into this equation. What Mylan has Amelia may not have what Amelia has. Eileen may have what Eileen has. Rosemary may not have, and Fasti and Julie, and so on and so forth. Everybody has their unique position within the Kundalini. But the one of the elements of love that is so amazingly important to the Kundalini process is that of trust. To trust is an act of love. To trust without phenomena without anything is an act of faith. To have faith in the Kundalini is a severe form of trust. So I really suggest that you begin to to have that level of faith. Now we talked in the show before about devotion and how essential devotion can be to to uh, you know an amazing level of Kundalini awareness and activity upon the inner and outer body of expression. If you can begin a devotional relationship with your kundalini, then I strongly suggest that you do so. Uh, I don't care if, uh, you know, if you just, you, you know, you look at a rose and you see the unfolding of that rose. Well, when you see the unfolding of that rose, you can just see it as a mirror for your kundalini awakening. If you have a flesh teacher who is able to give, well, I don't know how you the Indians have a word for it, like a sat guru, I guess. If you look into the eyes of that teacher, that flesh teacher, uh, and you feel the Kundalini transmission, and you like that teacher, and you trust that teacher, then do that. Do that. But also realize that, so for instance, in my case, when you look in my eyes on the healing photo, and you, you see the Kundalini in the eyes, you're just seeing, you're seeing a, an expression of the energy from that particular moment in time into you and once again the kundalini knows itself it's a reflection of the kundalini divinity is at once singular and plural at the same time as our kundalini awakened people becoming singular and plural at the same time not one or the other at the same time and this really, really steps outside of our paradigm of understanding how life on this world works. And I understand that. I understand that it can cause you confusion. I understand that, that you may not be able to grasp it right off the bat. But that's okay. That's okay. You allow the kundalini to, to begin to assert itself within you, and she will teach you how that is. He will teach you how that is. So just for a moment, I want to, to, to speak with and to be with those who listen to this broadcast while they sleep. And I suggest all of you do this. This is a very, very, very good way of bringing about kundalini awakening dreams, kundalini activated dreams, uh, symbols of kundalini, uh, any of the many, many manifestations of kundalini within the dream life. Now I'm talking to the dreamers, to the sleepers. Hello, my friends. Gana um tuam gana patia bahe. Kavin kavinum upamashavas tamam. Vishtara jam bramina braminam maspata anaha. Nasan Mani TBC the Sadanam. Dream, my friend, dreams of the Kundalini, dreams of the Shakti, dreams of the sacred feminine. 
in the sacred mail. Look for the snakes, look for the spiders, look for the butterflies, look for the cats, look for the wolves, look for the horses, look for those creatures who represent the kundalini to your process. Sleep, my friends, sleep and dream, sleep and dream. Ah. to the living awake world right now. If you have any questions or if you have a scenario of trust that you'd like to ask about, please call uh, area code 347-934-0026. 347-934-0026. I have about 34 minutes left in. And if there's anyone out there, and once again, I can see the chat room, so if anybody is out there who would like to participate in this program, please call that number, 347-934-0026. I feel like I'm in one of those programs that, like, <laughs> ask you for donations, and you'll get a free San Francisco <laughs> French fry touched by a seagull. <laughs> by what part of the seagull, I won't say, but you'll get a free French fry <laughs> if you call in now. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so my trust with the Kundalini uh, didn't come fast. Uh, 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 Early Kundalini Christian was very much a control person, very much into controlling himself. And, you know, I had taken some martial arts, and I was very sure about who I was, why I was, what. I was, and and so my my Kundalini, you know, it knew that it was going to be a long process. <laughs> a long process. So I kept getting people in my life that were harsh, harsh, harsh teachers. Not teachers of Kundalini, teachers of a certain faculties within normal living. That forced me into levels of of uh, behavior that the Kundalini liked, and so this is something that you may look for in your in your early experience as well. You may see people coming into your life that are severely challenging to your to your serenity, to your calmness, and to your level of understanding of how you think you are. Okay, and from from that interaction with you, will you begin to to formulate behavioral modifications that you don't even know have anything to do with the Kundalini? Uh, uh, if anybody's read uh, uh, Carlos Castaneda, uh, you know, even though a lot of that information is taken from various sources, he did bring it out to the public, and I honor him for that. And and he he termed these people in our lives petty tyrants. How do you say that in French? La uh, <laughs> tyrant <laughs> petit. Les petits tyrants, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so these, these, these little petty tyrants come into our lives to challenge us, to make us work for them in, in harsh situations, to make us listen to the situation, to be angry with us, to scream and yell and shout and whatever they can do that that me uh, you know, sees as necessary for our ability to accept Kundalini in a, a different format. I mean, there's a whole level of of conditioning that occurs for a person. And as you who are listening to this program will now know, you are in the middle of a conditioning scenario wherever you are inside the Kundalini. It never stops. Chrisom, with 25 years of experience being, you know, an awakened Kundalini person, is still, you know, being challenged by the Kundalini, is being given equations by the Kundalini, whether it's teaching or helping other people, or whether it's just, you know, helping uh, the environment. Uh, you know, uh, Magdalene, I would have Magdalene go out into the ocean and join her. We both do a prayer to to the waters of the world to not be negative 
impacted by the Fukushima radiation. That's just one example. Um, your level of, of of grace within the Kundalini, your level of happiness and joy is going to be a, a completely contingent on your levels of trust in the process. The less trust you have, the more fear and the more pain you will have. Uh, and and once again, I'm going to say it. If, 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 you, if you have a flesh teacher, then you listen to them and make a commitment to them. Don't keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Find a teacher that you trust, that the kundalini in you trust, and then go with them. It's not necessarily going to be me. It could be Magda. It could be Amelia, it could be Eileen, it could be you know, Rosemary, it could be Fosti, it could be Julie. I mean, it doesn't, I mean, you want to begin to, to to stop looking and start being. Stop looking, searching for person because they're not there. And if they tell you that they're there, then they're lying. There's a creature from the Black Lagoon walking by, chasing the girls. They're screaming. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> what a way to get a date. Anyway, so <laughs> here in San Francisco, Fisherman's Wharf, you can expect that. Uh, if you have any questions about this, we have 28 minutes left. So you can call that phone number that I've said too many times now. And so there it is. Uh, Amelia Santara, if you would come on. Um, I, I'm on. I'm staying on this time. For... <laughs> <laughs> what was the most challenging situation for you? The most fearful, the most scary, the most, the the most of the most for you, my dear. Oh, Chris, and I would not be able to recall, and that's the <laughs> truth. Um, there there have been quite a few, and what happened, you know? Choose one. I mean. No, oh, I can't remember. Partly what happens to me, Chris, is when something has passed, I find it difficult to go back in and recall exactly what it was, um, especially when I'm put on the spot. <laughs> I can't think of anything. I mean, the most... Um, okay, let me All say right, the right, most let me, important let me, thing... Let me, change, is, let, me, let me change it around for you. What's the happiest thing that's happened? There are so many happy things, you know. I mean, goodness me. I mean, there are so many different levels. There's the relationship with the Kundalini directly. I mean, that is completely exclusive. Um, and the joy that I feel and the bliss that I feel when I'm in union and communion with the Kundalini. And then that, as it transfers into my life with my husband and my family and my work and in everything that I do. So, I mean, it's not one particular thing, you see. It just, it's an everything. I understand, and my dear. Don't struggle. Don't struggle. I'm not. I'm, I'm the most important thing, I suppose, in my life is the Kundalini. And, I mean, Kundalini awakened in me at this particular time. So, I have come to really trust that and to trust the Kundalini such a in. Great politician. You realize that? You should run for office, really. Huh? <laughs> You should make a great audition. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. It's a compliment. It's a compliment. Okay. Oh, and, I hear uh, that. Oh, no. Now, um, <laughs> thank you, my dear. I was just seeing if you could relate to some, you know, some of your other experiences. That's okay. I won't put you on the yeah, spot. Yeah, no, I, I, gonna... I, I, I don't recall them presently, Chris and Noom. No worries. No worries, my dear. Yeah, no worries. I know that when when the shakti comes through me, like when I'm writing, this has happened. And, and what Amelia says is absolutely true. I, you know, I'll have uh, I'll be in the shakti zone, and really, when you're in the shakti zone, shakti pretty much takes over everything. And and I'll write an you know, shut an article through me, and a, a, a month later, I'll come across an article on the kundalini, and, and I'll start reading. I go, God, this is really good. And then I'll say, Wait a minute, did I write that? So, so yeah, the, memory, the memory issue is a is thing now. Uh, I would like to say something, though, Chris, about, about the trust 
aspect in relation to um, myself. And partly, you know, because I'm married, because I have a family, part of my process was also about, I suppose, I think you touched on this earlier, was about um, letting it be known to John um, how important um, my Kundalini awakening was without, you know, um, it taking over in any way. I kept an awful lot of it to myself, but as time went on, it became important to establish that between John and myself that this was such an important thing um, in my life. And so um, that, that's an aspect of trust as well, you know, that has been Huge. important for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. and so it's establishing taking time for my kundalini, and um, yeah, and that is important. And I think sometimes people, yeah, well, I anyway, mean, never mind. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's all, that that is a very good point. That is a very good point. And and uh, along the lines of trust, um, it's hard to find a teacher that you can trust. It's hard. It's not easy, especially within the Kundalini. And right now I am holding a book called Daughter of Fire, and it's the diary of a spiritual training with a Sufi master by one named Irene Tweedy, T-W-E-E-D-I-E. Magdalene will attest that I just opened the book to anywhere. Okay, I just picked up the book and opened it. It's on page 524 for those of you that had it. And here's what they say, and I, and I agree with this completely. Here is what they say. What is the difference between a bad teacher and a good teacher? A bad teacher, and I quote, will always say how followers expect him to behave. The conventional idea of a spiritual teacher is that he is all kind, eloquent, compassionate, dignified, wearing robes or Arm which distinguish him from the ordinary mortals, uttering at all times wise, profound sentences so he will behave accordingly, because he is after personal prestige or worldly possessions or even money or honors. But a good teacher obeys a law of which the world has no notion. Do you know what is Swadharma? It is a Sanskrit word, and it means a dharma, a duty, which is innate in the thing. Embedded in its swabhave, true nature, for instance, the swadharma of the water is to be wet, and that of the fire is to burn and to consume, of the wind to blow. They cannot help it. It is in their nature. And so it is with the sat guru. He just is. He may do things which people don't understand or may even condemn. For love does not always conform to the conventional idea people have made of it. Love can appear in the shape of great cruelty, a great injustice, or even calamity. In this respect, one could say that the Fed Guru is similar to divinity. He cannot be judged or measured by worldly standards. Shasi Tabriz uh, uh, was said to be rude and abrupt. <laughs> he used to address his audience as oxen and asses. Nevertheless, he was a great teacher, and Rumi dedicated a whole book of poetry to him as he was Rumi's teacher. Did that come through, Amelia? Yes, yes. Uh, loud and clear, yeah. You need to look at a Kundalini teacher with a very different set of eyes, a very different set of emotional understanding, and trust the Kundalini in him as you would trust the Kundalini in yourself. This, this creates the fertile ground for exceptional levels of devotion, and that level of devotion will take you much deeper and much 
with much greater levels of love and trust and support into your kundalini equation than you would ever have have been able to give without it. And get that book. It's a good book. It's a, it's a difficult book because, you know, the teacher in that book is, is definitely true. He doesn't... Uh, he basically doesn't give a heck or a hoot what the people think of him. They like him or they leave him. Kind of like me. <laughs> Magdalene has fallen very silent here next to me. She's, she's, she's gone, oh shit, what have I done? <laughs> no, what are you thinking now, Magdalene? Well, I'm seeing two things. Um, the the part, the the extract that you read from the from the book, um, is true. That's been the most challenging thing for me because I belong to the category of people who thought the master should be like the first lines that you read. Okay. And it's true that for a very, very long time I had difficulties with working with Chrism because for me it was far away from my from the picture I had in my mind of what a master or a spiritual leader would be like. And it's true it's only very recently that uh, I've started to change this and I, I'm, I think I'm starting to understand that when you do this, there's like a sub lesson in this, and uh, and and only recently have I been starting to see the yeah like lower la- uh, layers of the teaching when you do this. And we've been working together for four years now. Think about that, folks. I'm getting it now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I I'm not the most uh, loved teacher on the internet. A lot of uh, a lot of untruths have been spoken about what I say and do, and a lot of fabrication, and some truth as well. And I am not always fluffy, and and I'm not a fluffy bunny. I'm not even a chocolate marshmallow bunny. Uh, I, I, Kundalini doesn't always respond in kindness, but there are levels. And the, the teachings of, of individuals and, 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 and masses are very different. When I'm teaching an individual, the Kundalini goes straight into the individual and looks at their equation and, 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 and teachings that are according to that karmic equation and the, and the Kundalini equation that that person is having at the time. Uh, when I'm teaching masses, it's different. It, I don't even know how to say it. Uh, Feelings are not always honored. Amelia, are you still there? I'm still here. (laughs) (laughs) Have have you had a similar response to some of my teachings as as Magdalene? Yes. um, Yes, I have. We, yes, I have. Um, I probably, um, yeah. <laughs> no, so, okay. Of that being course, said, of course I have. How, how, no, I mean, how were you able to have trust after that? Well, that's interesting because there's there's a couple of reasons because there have been different scenarios. So as long as you don't ask me to give an example, <laughs> um, um, yeah. Well, you see, there there have no there have been things like. I have learned the lesson myself. Sometimes I have learned I've gone on a long detour that I needn't have gone on, really. <laughs> I listened in the first place. <laughs> so that is a teaching in itself. So I've done that a few times. Um, and I've also learned by, not, by, by seeing the detour, let's call it, and by choosing to trust you and to follow your directions and instructions and teaching for me. And I have very quickly um, got to a different case. Um, that would be another aspect of it. I mean, there are so many ways, but I, yeah, you're, no, you're not a fluffy bunny. Um, and there are lots of different layers, but I, would, I can state categorically, I trust you completely. I mean, and I've been working with you now since, 
Well, the same time as Magali, probably, 2009. Um, I'm, honored. I'm honored to receive that, Tristan. The Kundalini, yeah, com- the, the Kundalini completely. Isn't, the, the Kundalini and, is and, not It just is. It just and is. the Kundalini also, um, you know, affirms or infuse. I mean, there is a sim. What's that word? A sim. A simile? Yeah, a symbiosis or something. There's a. You know, symbiotic. symbiotic. Thank you. Symbiotic. There, there's, there's a sort of a flow whereby the Kundalini infuses and affirms and um, works in that way with me too, you know. Um, as I allow the Kundalini to insert her will, I allow you. There's, you know, it's, it's amazing, Chris. And so, I mean, if anybody is out there listening, I can state, as Magdalene is stating, I can now categorically say I trust my Kundalini teacher completely and absolutely and it has never ever ever left me down so thank you thank you Kundalini I knew you were going to say that thank you <laughs> I'm going to ask Michael the same question I mean of all the weird stuff I've had you do all the strange behaviors all the counter social behaviors how can you still trust anything that i tell you um so as i've said before i have quite a strong communication with my kundalini for dreams so first um i would say i've had very clear try it again good okay very clear. So, shall I start from the... Okay. So, I was saying I've had very clear instructions uh, in my dreams that I should work with chrism and only with chrism. And uh, so, that's the first thing. And also, I've had guidance uh, with books that uh, chrism was, uh, was the... Or at least that I should obey my master or that I should work without, uh, always with trust and without questioning. Yeah, it's, and, and you know, she used that word obey, you know, and it's like, God, that's such a strong word. It's like when I was early on in my Kundalini awakening, you know, that middle finger would end up so fast and so furious in the face of anybody that told me to obey anything that I was supposed to do that I didn't agree with or, you know, that I was somewhat uh, cautious about. And so <laughs> and I can understand, you know, the, uh, the difficulty that maybe the Kundalini had in in uh, bringing some of this soul to <laughs> into a divine firmament. But I'm also going to go to another person who is, who's been listening and who has been with me really almost the longest this would be Eileen Laurel. Hello, Eileen. Hi, Chris. Have Have you ever had any kind of a difficult experience with me as your teacher? Oh, oh no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> many, 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 many. Uh, and I, I was sitting here thinking, I I trust you with my heart. That's what came to mind. I trust you with my heart, but my ego has a real hard time trusting you. And that's yeah, what came to mind. Why, why would it be? I'm sorry? Why would that be? Because my ego is, is very strong, and I'm like, it doesn't want to be told what to do. But also because you're, you're constantly being challenged all the time. Oh, yes. Definitely. And the the book that you have in front of you, The Daughter of Fire, I did read that book. And that probably, of all the things that I had read, came the most close to what I saw, uh, how, you, how you taught your teachings. I really saw... Now, uh, um, you, you say my teachings, and, and so does Amelia and and, and, even, and Mugden and, and as well. I know. And I, yeah, yeah. Um, the other gurus don't really say that because they don't need to. They're probably in a culture that, 
you know, where the people already assume, well, okay, that's divine what, what, and whatnot. But for the Western audience, I always try to make that really clear that Kundalini is what is speaking through the teacher. That's what makes us right. sat through is the, is the expression of, of divine energy through that individual. So, and I, and I, I just, understand that. It's just, yes, you're yes. here. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I have been with you for a long time and I will continue to be with you um, because I see the value in a living teacher and the teachings that come through you from Shakti are very helpful to so many people on so many levels. Um, and I'm I'm struggling. It's, it's been a struggle, but I feel I've, I'm getting there slowly, a lot more slowly than some, but well, you, that's okay. You may, be, you may be surprised to hear me say it, my dear, but uh, from my kundalini to you, you're cooking with gas. Oh really? Well, thank you. You are, that's, you are. And when I when I when I saw you down there at the uh, Arizona seminar back, I think 2011, I think. Uh, in Arizona, uh, yes, you were very hot. You were very hot to touch. You were very hot to touch. I know, and I and, think that feels like it comes and goes. So. Well, it, well, the know. thing is, it's just you're just being cultivated. Like all of us, we're in different levels of cultivation. That's all it is. Don't put any, you know, don't put any stress or strain or anxiety about your process because you don't feel you're measuring up because you don't have the phenomena that other people are having. Um, it's not about phenomena. It's about trust. It's about right. trust. I mean, and you have that. And I have. I'll tell you what, everybody. Well, I've been. Uh, since 2007, I only started teaching in 2005. I've worked with Eileen since 2007, and she has been put through the ringer. She has been raked across the coals. Uh, she has not only fire walked, she has fire jogged. <laughs> she has well, fire walked. <laughs> and I want to thank you, Chrism. Um, it, no, no. It, 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 you are a very difficult teacher, but it's needed. Kundalini is not a walk in the park, as you have oh, said. <laughs> and uh, it so is it, the park. I'm sorry. I said it is a park. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but thank you. That's uh, that's reassuring. Very well, yeah, you are. And so and so is Rosemary. Rose, Rosemary right now is giving a presentation on the Kundalini. Yes. Think about that, everybody. At yes. this moment in time, she is up there in front of people giving a presentation. How cool is that, everyone? And, and next week she has an interview at 6 o'clock. When you go on, she has an interview um, sweet. set up sweet. to promote the seminar. So. Very, very sweet. Very, very sweet. Uh, thank you, my dear Eileen. Thank you. Thank you, Chrism. Going into the with Eileen. So, look, I've got about seven minutes, six minutes left, and if anybody would like to call in, the number is 347-934-0026. Now, we just talked about trust in the flesh teacher, but forget about the flesh teacher. Trust your kundalini. If your kundalini leads you to a flesh teacher, then yes, yes, you know, trust that flesh teacher. But until it does, trust your kundalini itself. The kundalini is what matters, not the flesh container. I can tell you what. What these women have said are absolutely correct. I am a difficult teacher. And I come right out and say, I am a difficult teacher. I'm not... Uh, you know, all those qualities. Let me look at that again here. 524, was it? Jeez Louise. Can't even find it. <laughs> Seven minutes. I'm on the clock here. <laughs> here we go. 524. Uh, the conventional idea of a spiritual teacher is that he's always kind and benevolent, compassionate, dignified, wearing robes. Or garments which distinguish him from ordinary mortals uttering at all times wise, profound sentences. What I, the Kundalini has put into me love, kindness, and benevolence and compassion. 
dignified, maybe. Wearing robes or garments, I, I'm better without anything, but I'll put on clothing as I'm wearing right now. Um, and I never utter wise, profound sentences. Mine are always real kind of profane and not marginally funny. But the Kundalini through me, the Kundalini is always wise and profound. And I always, you know, the the uh, for me, you know that by even doing this program, that, that the Kundalini is, it's the dominant for the and so, uh, you go ahead and, and, and you read all the complaints about me or whatever, if there are any left, but I'm sure there are. And, uh, you know, you go ahead and, and, and go in judgment or whatever like that, but you trust your kundalini. Never judge the kundalini that you agree with or not like, or aren't pretty enough, handsome enough to... to to put on seminars that are like conventions. You trust your Kundalini. Those of you that are having a problem with fear, fear is the opposite of trust. So you need to really turn yourself around. Start with simple things. Look at the patterns of fear and what they are around and begin to address those fear issues one by one. Typically, you have to face it. Now, this, I don't, I'm not suggesting you put your head in the lion's mouth. You don't have to do that. Okay? You begin to assess why it is you're afraid of anything and begin to take steps in the direction of trusting the Kundalini, whether or not dealing directly with your fear. So let's say, oh, I have a fear of the ocean. I have a fear of this big, bad fear of the ocean. I trust the Kundalini. That's all you have to say. I fear the ocean, but I trust the Kundalini. And between those two poles of, of, of expression, the Kundalini will begin to help you deal with your fear of the ocean or whatever it is. With the of spiders and insects. And so what does she do? She puts little tiny spiders in the corner of the room. Now, if I've not been there, I know for a fact Magdalene would have got a cup herself. She would have got a little piece of paper to cover it up, and she would have gently and delicately and a little bit uh, uh, (laughs) frenetically (laughs) placed that spider outside. She would not kill it. As much as she's afraid of it, she wouldn't kill it. We were just in in a hotel or, or, or a house that happened to have a ginormous cockroach. I had never seen a cockroach of that size. It was an amazing cockroach. And it, it actually looked at me, and I could see its eyes were looking at me. I thought that was kind of strange. <laughs> she, she was petrified. Oh. Can, can you say the answer? I know. <laughs> now, she wanted to leave that house, but I wouldn't let her leave the house. I wouldn't let her leave the room. She had to leave that room because I know that the Kundalini is her always, and this helps her to begin to trust uh, in in the in the many different forms of life that the Kundalini expresses itself in, and that includes insects and you know all different creatures. So you trust your Kundalini no matter what. You don't have to trust a teacher except one, and, and <laughs> the only teacher that is really worth your trust, in my opinion, is the Kundalini. If your kundalini brought you to me, well, then that's once again your kundalini. Thank you to everyone. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you, Magdalene. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you, all of you in the chat room. And most of all, thank you, kundalini.